You guys are probably wondering, why am I dressed like this at the moment? Well, we're talking about Tsunami Mage, and maybe if I dress for the beach and have this warm sun on me, I will get fro- Oh, who am I kidding? Everything's gonna get frozen. I hate this deck. That's right, I'm doing my due diligence as a Hearthstone content creator, and I'm talking about the decks that I may not even be a fan of because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to talk about everything that drives you crazy in Hearthstone, and as of right now, a lot of things are driving me crazy. And well, Demon Hunter, Shaman, and Mage are still on top of the ladder right now, and Mage, even though it was nerfed, is still absolutely rocking with Big Spell Mage to a certain degree. Because at top 1000 Legend, you're gonna see Overheal Priest, Mech Rogue, Odin Warrior, with like some Evolve and Rainbow Shamans, but unfortunately, Big Spell Mage, or fortunately in my case, it does decrease in popularity and in power, but it is still a fantastic deck to grind with, and there is one particular deck that I'm going to recommend to where if I had to play Big Spell Mage, I would choose to play the fun version of the deck. And the fun version of the deck just so happens to be the best one too. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified about all of our future deck guides because we talk about fun decks, good decks, and sometimes both. Sometimes fun and good can be in the same deck if you like this kind of play style. But if we look at Diamond through Legend, so if you're looking to get into Legend, Big Spell Mage is still a deck you could absolutely get the job done with, with a 52% win rate in the middle of Tier 2. It's still a good deck, and honestly, at the lower ranks, this is just one of those decks that absolutely crushes decks that cannot answer the Turn 5 or Turn 6 Tsunami. And that pretty much is what the deck is all centered around at the moment. But if we take a look at Top 1000 stats, there is one big spell mage that's actually doing well and it runs a copy of the galactic projection orb that's right the cool goofy deck actually has a lot of stats behind it in order to show that it's not only good but it is effective so if we check out hs guru you're going to see a lot of really interesting archetypes right now because even my you're going to see two decks from me from my stream because we were experimenting with some weird rogue decks and let me tell you there's some weird videos coming out in these next couple of days seriously you don't want to miss these videos the rogue decks are all over the place but big spell mage hype is starting to die down on people's streams but it is still a deck that is you know as i literally refresh this tab four big spell mages just emerged so like this is the great thing about hs guru you can just keep scrolling down and you will find boom three more big spell mages so it is still a deck that people are playing with and even on hs guru it is still looking like one of the best decks in the game orb a big spell mage sitting at a 54 percent win rate and a 7.8 percent popularity pretty decent at diamond through legend and then in top 1k it does kind of fall down a little bit big spell mage by itself less than 50 percent however the orb deck actually has late game you know sustainability to where it's not just about the scam and that's what makes it particularly different so let's actually take a look at the deck here forbidden orb big spell mage and why is it forbidden because if i catch you playing big spell mage i'm gonna tell your mother and she's not gonna be happy about it so if we take a look at the deck, things have gotten a little bit expensive, but trust me, there's a very good reason for a lot of these cards. So first, let's talk about the early game, then we'll talk about the ETC, and then the legendaries that are absolutely crucial in this deck. I'm sorry, but this is one of those decks where the legendaries really do carry this deck's uh, efficiency and its win rate. But one legendary card that you don't need in particular is Dream Planner Zephyrs. This is more so just a card that I love to put into decks, and it does serve a purpose. It, it's a way of being able to generate random AoEs and board removal because this deck is very uh, very fragile at times to where if you don't solve one particular board or stall your opponent in one way or another, then you will just get rolled because Big Spell Mage is very dependent on those swing turns. And AoEs are effectively swing turns. So if you have Zephyrs, you can play it. But if you don't have Zephyrs, I wouldn't break your back crafting it because the other legendaries are a lot more important. But let's talk about the early game of this deck because in typical Hearthstone fashion, we are playing Miracle Salesman, Gold Panner, and Metal Detector in the early game in order to build up a board, not take a whole bunch of damage, and then meaningfully build up our deck to either play King Tide or Skyla, and this is exactly what I'm talking about with the legendaries in this deck. You really do need your King Tide and your Skyla at the right time in order to play your Tsunamis as early as possible because that is the main power of the deck. And another main power of the deck that I feel like a lot of people 
people were sleeping on for a while was the Norganon. Norganon wasn't really a card that people were experimenting with until after Pipsy Paladin's popularity really started to pop off. And the reason why I mentioned that is because this is a great combination with your con uh, conniving conmen, for example. And people were like, wait a minute, if Paladin can do this, why isn't Mage doing this? Because one fantastic utilization of Nor uh, Norganon as an actual win condition is him literally just surviving a turn. You play him immediately, or you can play him from the con man. You can make your enemy cards uh, cost one mana more going into the next turn. And if Norganon survives, you can activate his ability, then play reverb on that Norganon, and you will produce a Norganon that's already had two abilities used with its third ability ready to go, which is, guess what? The five damage that's going to be doubled twice. So therefore you have 20 damage in the pocket if Norganon literally survives for one turn. So that is the reason why this card is absolutely necessary. That is why we are running one copy of Reverb. It's not just, you know, in here as like a removal tool. It can be used as removal, but this is the main reason why it's in the deck because of its Norganon possibilities. So that's why I believe this deck is a lot better because it's not just all in on Tsunami. But even then, even with all these other win conditions that we've already explored and talked about, we still got, you know, Sunset Volley, all these other spells in the deck, like uh, Glyph, for example, all to support the ETC cards. The Glacial Shard against aggro, star power against maybe another aggro deck in case you need the four or five turn, but then you have the ultimate, you know, the most common card you're going to pick, the Galactic Projection Orb. And this way you can actually meaningfully play for the late game, so that way you can have like an AOE happen with the star power, you remove all of the threats, which is why these spells are in the deck, because imagine, you know, the order of Glyph into Rising Waves into some random four drop that you got from the Glyph into a star power to clear the board. Maybe you got lucky and hit Glyph into like a Blizzard, so Blizzard gets cast, and then you have your big spells like your Sunset uh, Volley and your Tsunami going face almost guaranteed, and if all of that damage goes face, that is literally 10 mana with the Galactic Orb to deal 22 damage. So yeah, that is a lot of damage all in one turn, especially if you just make it to turn 10, but that is the primary reason why we are running the Galactic Projection Orb, because we have this meaningful win condition that is not just about whether or not our tsunamis get played by turn five turn six and even though this deck can win in other ways it still just makes me mad i don't know dude this is just one of those decks to where if i get frozen and it feels like it automatically wins the game i'm just in tilt mode until you know the game is over and sometimes even if i win it just doesn't feel that satisfying but i will go ahead and say that this is definitely a more fun version of the deck because you have these other win conditions that can meaningfully close out a game and again it's not just all in on the tsunami i love the idea of a big spell mage being good but for some reason having my face and my minions getting frozen a whole bunch i don't know it just does something to me but the last thing that I'll talk about is just the mulligan because the mulligan of this deck really is as simple as you think it is. All you care about are the cards that enable your Tsunami. You will never keep Tsunami in your hand unless you have Skyla or King Tide ready to go. So the only cards that are important are your King Tide, your Portal Mancer Skyla, your Salesman, and your Seashell. But even with Seashell, I don't even like keeping this card unless you have another card ready to go just because of how important these other legendaries are. Even Caligos, for example, has a higher mulligan win rate than some of these other tools because cheating out the card, cheating out the tsunami is the most important thing. And the funny thing about this deck is that even with like metal detector and water cooler artists, this is just one of those decks to where these cards are good and they are effective. But again, the tsunami is really the main thing that drives up the win condition of this deck to where, yes, I would highly recommend to keep these other legendaries, but some other cards to keep your eyes on are definitely going to be your metal detectors and your gold panners as well as the watercolor artist. I realized I said water cooler. I like water cooler. Sorry, just deal with it. But yeah, these are the cards that you want to keep in your mulligan because you want early game threats as well as answers to the board, generating coins, and getting your tsunami ready as soon as physically possible. And don't forget, if you do enjoy this kind of concept, feel free to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out the Patreon because I've got some good news. We put in an application for a new house. That's right, I'm looking into a new rental house and we're getting out of this apartment, hopefully soon. There'll be a new wall behind us, an all new home and a fenced in backyard for Xena. It's gonna be fantastic and I have a lot of content ideas. So if you wanna support you know, this channel and also help me pay my rent, this, uh, uh, the Patreon support is very important and I tremendously thank anybody for contributing to it. But thank you so much for making it to the end of this deck breakdown and we'll see you for the next video. I hate, I hate Skyla so much.
Fuck Skyla. I just need Tsunami. I have the King Tide, so King Tide better than Skyla. Should I keep both? Who cares? We're playing Mage. We don't have to think about it. Yeah, what, what what the hell is Rainbow Shaman? How is Rainbow Shaman good? Or is this just a uh, Pirate Shaman with extra steps? It's just Pirate Shaman. This isn't Rainbow. When I think Rainbow, I'm thinking like rag like uh jive insect combo Let's this is just pirate shaman what oh, oh 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 it's rainbow because it has razzle dazzler that's just the reason why i guess it's not pirates but still that list is pretty good uh, yeah it's just i thought it was something different i thought it was something different like whatever i think like like i said whatever I, I i hear rainbow shaman i'm like oh we're playing that cabaret card but nah it's just it's just another dazzler deck it shouldn't be called Rainbow unless it runs Cabaret. Exactly. Like, what What did we call that deck previously? I mean, it is Rainbow to a degree, but it's kind of not. Rainbow means Razzle or Sif. Yeah, exactly. So it's just Tempo Shaman. This is really the number one deck at Legend, though. Not Pipsy Paladin. That's lame. <laughs> How is this deck not the number one deck, seriously? How is this card's win rate not just obscenely high? It's just Barnes for Mage. Ramp Druid was called Tempo, the names are me. They pretty much are at this point. We have so many decks that like overlap in terms of like what cards they use. Like all, all Ramp Druids, for example, being called Dragon Druid for the longest time. What is the next expansion? Soon, very soon. That's all I could say. <laughs> it'll, it'll be happening very soon. And it'll be awesome. Exactly 10, by the way. Didn't count it. Literally didn't count it. I I, I had the worst flying experience of my life uh, flying to California this time because I had like a, uh, it started with a three hour delay when I had like no sleep going into the, uh, the next day. I was hopefully going to get there by like 10 a.m. California time after like flying a whole bunch and I didn't get there until like 7 p.m. California time. It's the worst, worst airport experience that I ever had. Luckily, I took the next day to just uh, to just uh, relax and just, you know, recuperate, survive, that sort of thing. I walked around Irvine a little bit. Did I fly a Spirit or Delta? I, 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 I flew Delta. I flew Delta. I will say Delta was very accommodating because uh, I did have one issue where I was kind of like, uh, I was a bit lightheaded on one of my flights because I wasn't really, um, I wasn't really well nourished and hydrated when I got to the high altitude, and so I needed a second to kind of like like eat food and wait. And they they took care of me and got me on my next flight without a problem. Yeah, Spectrum is cool, dude. I, I didn't realize how intensive everything was. I guess is a good way of putting it. Very very intense over there. All right, so I'm gonna believe in my deck because if I'm not believing in my deck, then what am I doing? Easy tsunami. I said I believed in my deck. But unfortunately, I had to believe in Hearthstone. You can still believe in the deck, though. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ain't that about how it goes. This actually screws me up more than anything, is the sad... That's the sad news here. Sag. Coin Norganon. Five mana coin. Gonna mail Sunset Volley, I can feel it. My hands full. A limited time oh, I'm so used to playing this like Pipsy Paladin. Those options don't really feel like they're that good for Mage though. Like, yeah, bring it back a minion could be good, but uh wait a minute. Do we believe? Oh, 
100% free. Fake gold. You piece of shit! Come on, man! Stand proud. <laughs> I was gonna go a step further and bring it back the testing dummy. Why do I dare have fun? God Not only do I miss the 50-50 on getting I, I wasn't even a 50-50. It was a it was a it was a, a one in three. We hit the one in three and then we hit the one in whatever to bring back the worst bit. Fuck this game, dude. Fuck big spell mage. How does anybody have fun with this trash archetype? Uh, I don't even know if I really care what he eats. Okay, I kind of cared about that. God damn you. Uh... <laughs> Wait, this survived? Really? Fine. I don't. I. I don't need them. I actually don't need the minions in my deck. I wonder if there's space for a digital card game that is more centered about asterisk only a competition of skill without random effects to save you from losing in 2024. More like a chess of card games. Oh but how would that card game be fun? The fun is in winning and being good at it. If you can't derive fun from that grind, the game ain't for y'all. Uh, so here's... Okay, so you said space for digital card game that's more centered about uh, only competition. I was just about to say, like, you just sound like you just described poker. Like, literally, you just described poker. I want the sunset volley. Ha 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 streamer love ha 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 streamer Bridge is it Bridge an actual card game though? He said online card game, but I guess that would be kind of another example. I don't know, dude. Like classic card games, like old face, uh, are like, you know, like, uh, playing playing trading card or playing card games, you know. Those are always skill testing. Like, have you ever played a game of gin rummy? If you know what gin rummy is, then you know that that game takes skill. There we go. Wait, is this just lethal? We haven't had another card. No. I haven't had another card that hits him. I'll Zephyrs for damage, and if damage isn't good enough, we'll just play an organic for tax. We, we are the tax man now. Savage Roar. Ooh. Alright, tax man and counter spell. A secret also just works. Awesome. Bridge is high skill, high study, uh, like chesses. Bridge has been online since the 90s. Okay, what is bridge then? Bridge online card game? <laughs> the first link is an AARP games org link. <laughs> hey, young kitties, y'all want to play bridge with the AARP members? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's really funny, dude. <laughs> Wait, how is he not dead? Did I summon more board? Oh shit, I did. Oh, wait a minute. I summoned a lot of board here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, he's still dead. Just this. Okay, cool. I'm glad that orb got a game, but I haven't gotten an orb with uh, Sunset Volley yet. <laughs> Apparently it has been around since the 90s. <laughs> Garrosh does nothing wrong. Garrosh is on your side. <laughs> uh, it, it, the jokes write themselves. Garrosh join the army bec become a leader today. Join the horde. Son, why you're at the principal? He said, I will crush you and smack the kid with a ruler. I don't think it was a ruler. 
I, I think it, I think it was his fist. I, I think even at that age, Garrosh would still be punching kids on the playground. Alright, just need the tsunami at this point. Very slow start from the from the death. Of Keep on panning. Well, I don't have a reason to play the uh, the King Tide right now. If I was my opponent, they would have had the tsunami in hand, guaranteed. Are you ever like you're never supposed to just keep tsunami by itself, right? Like it just does it. Just, it's just never correct. It's just literally never correct. But watch me top deck it next turn anyway, because the game hates me. Probably could have coined hero power. So if I play this, it immediately is is play. Uh, um, risk it for the biscuit. A limited time offer. Well, this is awkward. We need objection back to counter King Tide. Uh, the actual devil has entered chat. Literal Satan is literally amongst us right now. You're supposed to uh, keep on panning, pal. You don't get it? Get those hands under those waters and keep on panning those nuggets. Real nugget gaming. <laughs> or nougat gaming. Gotta get those nougats, because I love candy. We have to just Khadgar, right? Alright, come on, Khadgar, help me out. Eh, you know, that's fine. He's got seven on the board, this gives eight. It makes up for it. And he's trading, so we get more. Dope. Make it, uh, make it a gift for mage. You get the temporary objection. Ice block or solid alibi. Hello, hello, Satan. Can you, can you please chill? Can you, like, we have children in chat and you're absolutely scaring them. Why, why aren't you thinking of the children right now? Would somebody please think of the children? All right, another secret. Wrong secret, but I'll take it. Kantgar? I mean, right now he's he's Kangar. Right now he's Kangar Chadgar. Played around the uh, the thing. Gotta love it. I need an adult. I am an adult. <laughs> I need an adult. I am an adult. By the way, I only kicked you because I picked up the aggression against your father. Take that. <laughs> Caligos, wrong lever, Cadgar. You got the star thing or just hope for the best? Uh, I didn't count it, uh, but I figured it would just work anyway. I automatically assumed it was enough and luckily it was. No, ma no matter what, it was always gonna hit, but I didn't know that when I casted it. The issue with Caligos is if I don't discover a good spell, the discount doesn't mean diddly, 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 diddly. We'll find it. God damn it. Well, I mean, I guess Heat Wave at least. Uh, heat Wave doesn't even do anything either, but it does. Ugh, does something. Hey! Alright. Here's another reason I'm gonna do this I have Con Man. If I draw a big spell, I can literally play, uh, play it for free because I get Caligos back. Plus, like, a 412 against a Death Knight is still good. Also, this is the th is this the third barrier? Wait a minute. 
That was the second barrier, sorry. Maybe we get a third barrier. Don't you cast Heat Wave? I did, I did cast it. I still have Rising Waves. Let's just go all in for the mixes. Oh, wait, yeah, we did play Heat Wave, so we're gonna get that from the con man. Okay, that's true. Well, I guess I'll bring it back then, because I'm a genius. No comment, dude. I have no comment. If I if I if I if if I if I say something, if I say anything, I'm I am in big trouble. You know, imagine reverb on his minion. Yeah, these draws are atrocious, dude. Also, double water cooler artist. Double water cooler. ETC, sunset volley, tsunami, and snake oils. The only card that's not something I want to draw is Zephyr's and Metal Detector. Take Barrier over a Mirror Image any day. Yeah, yup. The difference between four and eight. Oh wait, come on, now I want to draw Snake Oil. But guess what's gonna happen, guys? Who wants to take a guess on what's gonna happen? Any, uh, any ideas? Can't you lock board with them of reverb? Yes, that's exactly what I plan on doing, honestly. Cause like I can, I could reverb this, ping this. Unfortunately, because of the one, actually, hold on, the one one. I think I just want to go for the clear. One hundred percent real fake gold. <laughs> Another barrier. <laughs> That's four barriers, dude. Four barriers and a blizzard. This is maximum defense Khadgar weapon. This weapon has actually given us 32 life. <laughs> yeah, 32 armor, dude. And look at how much health I'm sitting at right now. I'm at 33 life right now. This guy has killed me, essentially. I am never dying, yeah. Contr yeah, this control mage looks really cool. Isn't it amazing how the only reason why this game is interesting is because I'm literally not drawing my wing conditions? Like, I've had, I've had, like, the con man into the rising thing was very important, for example. Um, also, here's something else that's pretty cool that I can do. So we can Norganon. We'll make his cards cost more. Trade here, do this. Nice. And now something that I can do is I can Norganon with, with this, automatically activate it, then play Reverb, and then give myself a 10 damage if I need it, if this doesn't survive. Okay, so it doesn't, damn. At this point, dude, I need the Sunset Volley. This is looking like a, a win the game with ETC kind of game. Hey, there it is. Nice. And now we just need ETC Tsunami, so that way we could do Tsunami into the orb. I am never die, but neither is he. Oh no, he'll definitely die. He'll definitely die at some point. However, do I have to worry about C and E? Well, that's kind of a problem. Nice! Amazing job, Yogg. Bang up job you did there. 100% real. Fake 
wow. Pretty high chance that we get either a Sunset Volley or a Tsunami. It's literally a 3 and 7. Well, now we can just do that next turn instead. All that extra armor, dude. Oh, well. Okay. Okay. Imagine just throwing it for the flex. Why is Norganon here for a combo? He's kind of a combo card. If Norganon sticks for a turn, uh, you can reverb it and you have 20 damage immediately. And there's also just like the stuff you could do with Con Man. That's why I like it. So if these two switch, this will be at two mana next turn, right? Just seems like the turn to play Skyla. Let's see if they actually switch in cost. They will both stay five. Really? I mean, I guess it's fine if this stays five, but I feel like these, like, they're at five right now because the King Tide, they swap mana cost. Like, this should go to 10, this should go to two. I guess the way to think about it is that they're at five, Skyla switches them and then sets them at, at five. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, King Tide in it already. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah, they're actually stuck at five. Okay. I guess that's good to know. Well, there's the other Tsunami. Low roll. So go for damage, and it looks like we may not even need to use the ETC. Wait, what? Isn't that actually like the worst? Because like, I can't combo this. I mean, that's, da that's damage, but like two King Crushes. Two King Crushes. I didn't even know I could get King Crush at all. Yeah, potentially perfect. I mean, hey dude, where I'm sitting, eight damage is exactly lethal. Eight damage is exactly lethal right now. Oh, don't, don't give him a Blood Plague, please. Oh, come on. Gotta be kidding me, dude. Crush is still lethal. No, it's not. It's two damage off now. <laughs> so now I have to do this. The number one freezes weapon. Number two, uh, to put him at one. Tsunami's lethal. Oh, wait a minute. Tsunami is 12. I'm still, ca I, I, I was counting it as nine. I was counting it as nine. Well, I mean, this was a great example on how this deck can be balanced when it wants to be.